Uh, now starting the May 7th, 2020 Mount Pleasant Planning Commission meeting, uh, Mr. Kane, will you call roll? Mr. Daly. Here. Friedrich. Here. Honig. Here. Horgan. Here. Irwin. Irwin, unmute, please. Let's get us our practice round. We'll come back to Commissioner Irwin. Commissioner Kostreva. Here. Commissioner Leash. Here. Commissioner Ortman. Here. Commissioner Rice. Here. Commissioner Irwin, any luck? No. There you go. Oh, you can hear me now? Yeah. You can. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Next time on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Move to approve the agenda. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? We will. Uh, oh, that's right. Vote. We'll call vote. Thanks for reminding Aye. me. Uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Friedrich. Aye. Commissioner Honig. Aye. Commissioner Horgan. Aye. Commissioner Irwin. Aye. Commissioner Castrava. Aye. Commissioner Leash. Aye. Commissioner Ortman. Aye. Commissioner Rice. Aye. All right. The agenda is adopted unanimously. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is approval of the February 6, 2020 regular meeting minutes. I move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Jacob, will you take a roll call vote? Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Friedrich? Aye. Commissioner Honig? Aye. Commissioner Horgan? Aye. Commissioner Irwin? Aye. Commissioner Kostreva? Aye. Commissioner Leash? Aye. Commissioner Orban? Aye. Commissioner Rice? Aye. Motions adopted unanimously. Thank you. And next item on the agenda is Zoning Board of Appeals report. Commissioner Friedrich? We did not meet. Thank you. And next item on the agenda is communications, Mr. Kane. Thank you, Madam Chair. We did not have any communications uh, when your packets were um, sent out. We did receive one communication from Mr. Roberson regarding uh, M20 realignment, which I provided to you uh, virtually on the dais this evening via email. Thank you. And next item on the agenda is public comment. If there's anyone from the public that would like to make a comment, now would be the time. Um, seeing no one, I'm closing public comment. And next item on the agenda is unfinished business master plan update. Mr. Kane. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I do, back to public comment, I just want to point out we are using a um, electronic public comment tonight. And I just wanted to confirm that we did not receive any public comments to that uh, public comment email box this evening. So if anyone was wondering, um, I provided in terms of the uh, master plan update, I provided um, an update in my memorandum in the packet. Just wanted to keep everyone up to date. Um, as you all already knew, uh, the COVID-19 situation has resulted in um, some modifications to what our uh, anticipated plans were for the spring in terms of the master plan. Um, so that updates in there. If um, you haven't already, I would encourage you to read the document on the project website, um, mountpleasant2050.com. Uh, we're continuing to monitor the COVID-19 situation as it evolves. And as we know more and have more certainty with that, um, I will continue to keep the planning commission updated. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Kane? Next item on the agenda is new business 2021 to 2026 capital improvement plan, Mr. Kane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as is our tradition, uh, Assistant Finance Director Chris Saladin is present this evening with us to provide you with a presentation on the proposed capital improvement plan. Um, at the conclusion of the presentation, you're welcome to ask any questions regarding the plan. 
ultimately we'll be looking for the planning commission this evening to make a recommendation regarding adoption of the plan to the city commission. Um, so I actually pre-recorded the presentation. So um, Carrie, if you could go ahead and switch us over to that. Good evening. Tonight I'm here to present the 2021 through 2026 capital improvement plan. This plan was constructed prior to COVID-19 impacting the United States. Um, at this point, we're assuming that we can afford the plan as presented. If we know more when we construct the 2021 budget in a few months, we can make adjustments to projects at that time. The capital improvement plan is the mechanism that allows the city to maintain and improve our community's public infrastructure. These projects represent tangible improvements and changes that our residents can see and touch and have a direct impact on the community. The plan is a culmination of input from various stakeholders that allows us to analyze what is possible and then prioritize our expenditures to best meet the needs of our community. Tonight's presentation will mostly focus on projects that are planned for 2021. We're about to begin the process of creating the 2021 operating budget, so it's important to understand and be committed to these projects. If there are projects that need to be modified, removed, or added, we would appreciate knowing sooner rather than later so we have time to incorporate the changes into the budget process. We will also briefly look at projects that are in the later years of the plan. So what gets included in the capital improvement plan? Projects that cost at least $20,000 span at least 10 years or longer. As you look at some of the project pages, you'll see in the detail that some projects were added or modified based on input received during the master plan process. Since the master plan has not been approved yet, further discussion may be needed to ensure those new or reprioritized projects have support from the Planning Commission and City Commission. Please let us know if you have any concerns with the draft master plan as it relates to the CIP. The appendices section now includes a long-term infrastructure cost estimate for our water and wastewater funds. In constructing the CIP, we looked to many sources to gather input when deciding what projects to prioritize. One commonly asked question is, what is a PASER rating? It's a 1 to 10 scale that's used to assess the condition of a paved surface. In our plan, this covers roads, parking lots, and sidewalks. The cash flow pages have a few purposes. They summarize everything in the plan on a few pages, so it's easy to evaluate the financial impact and timing of the proposed projects. This helps us ensure we have adequate reserves in place for future projects. I'd also like to remind everyone that the affordability of the projects listed over the next six years is contingent on the state delivering on its projected Act 51 contributions um, this is important because we used to contribute capital improvement funds to our local street fund, uh, as well as funding our sidewalk projects. Um, all of that are, is now covered by our Act 51 street funds. As we get into the individual 2021 projects, I'm going to give a brief explanation of the ones that are new, have changed significantly, or are more the more common questions that we get related to the capital improvement plan. In slides that identify grant funding, some of those projects don't have grants specifically identified at this point, but we're always looking for grant opportunities. For our uh, City Hall chambers, the audiovisual equipment at City Hall has been having increasing issues as it ages. This project was scheduled for 2023 in last year's capital improvement plan, but it's been moved up to address the issues. Our fire office renovation, uh, this project replaces office furniture, storage, and updates work areas uh, to increase productivity. For our city hall HVAC, this project takes uh, advantage of the ability to use a quote unquote free cooling during our cool weather months. For downtown, we're set to reconstruct the alley between Michigan and University. Based on prior direction from the City Commission, 
This project is set to be special assessed with property owners covering 70% of the cost and the city covering 30% of the cost. The city commission will need to have further discussion before the plan is approved. For our parking lots, we're looking at reconstructing parking lot number six, which is on the corner of University and Illinois. Um, we're also gonna be reconstructing parking lot number eight, which is on the corner of Broadway and Lansing. For our streetscape improvements, we're looking at adding uh, downtown amenities like stamped concrete at the edge of the sidewalk, tree grates, benches, bike racks, trash cans to East Illinois between Maine and Franklin along both sides of the street. And this project will uh, be in coordination with the street reconstruction and pedestrian lighting in that area. For parks, we have a couple of projects that incorporate input from our draft master plan. Our Canal Street Park project is adding a playground and swing set to the park that is already there. For our east side park improvements, uh, this is adding pickleball courts, repairing tennis courts, and redesigning the Horizon Park site plan for future year projects. For our public works projects, uh, pedestrian lighting is set to go on Illinois from Maine to Fancher. And similar to the downtown alleys, this project is set to be special assessed with property owners covering 70% of the cost and the city covering 30%. We'll need the city commission input prior to adopting the plan. Our new sidewalk is on Crapo from North Drive to where it dead ends, Gaylord from Kinney to Fancher, and Southmore from Crawford to Watson. Our sidewalk replacement is set for sections of sidewalk with a low PASER rating and complaint locations throughout the city. For our storm sewer extension, this is a several year project that aims to extend storm sewer in front of properties that do not currently have access. Um, the intention of this program is to give property owners some place to um, properly discharge their sump pumps. Our 2021 airport project is the continuation of tree abatement. Um, this basically clears out trees that are tall enough to uh, threaten the glide slope around the airport, which if that happens, then we have to uh, close the airport at night. For local streets, we're set to reconstruct Illinois from Maine to Fancher, Gaylord, Fancher to Mission, and we're going to be performing thin overlays on Chippewa, Franklin, Lansing, Palmer, and University. For wastewater in 2021, our uh, primary projects are replacing electrical panels, uh, lab hood cabinets, and rebuilding primary number one. For our water department, the largest projects scheduled for 2021 are the uh, reservoir actuator replacement, which are basically um, opens and closes valves to allow water through automatically at certain times, and replacing the roof on our main water plant. Looking beyond 2021, uh, this is a list of our recurring maintenance and improvement projects. Also beyond 2021, uh, this is a list of the projects that are more one-time in nature. Table eight in the back of the capital improvement plan um, shows projects that are not currently in our capital improvement plan, but are identified as possible future projects. They may not be in the plan because of funding considerations uh, or because we don't have enough information to place them in the plan yet. These are the topics that we're going to cover at the May 11th work session. During our May 25th work session, we're going to cover any questions that are outstanding from May 11th. Um, we're also gonna answer any city commissioner questions and we respectfully request that city commissioners get their questions to manager Ridley by May 15th. In addition to the work sessions, the city charter requires adoption of the capital improvement plan by June 8th. And we'll, we will be presenting the 2021 operating budget with these capital improvement plan projects on September 14th. Does anybody have any questions on the capital improvement plan? This is Commissioner Friedrich. I do have a, a few questions. Um, on page 51, where you talk about the Canal Street Park project, yes. um, 
there was a charrette that was scheduled with the um, neighborhood in April, but obviously that was canceled. You had mentioned that the money would be for playground equipment, swing sets. Um, is that exactly what that's going to be used for, or you're going to wait till after the charrette? Because I know there's some discussion. I, I live in that Swan neighborhood, and there's been some discussion about whether some of the neighbors right around there actually want want that kind of equipment there, or it might be something different. So, is that set in stone? That's what you guys are going to do, or after the charrette, whenever that can be, make the final decision. Uh, Jacob, do you have any any idea on what the plan is to get input from the surrounding neighborhood? I do not, um, other than to know that uh, past the conversations about that, I know the Parks Department has been very conscientious about the need to gather that input before yep. moving forward with anything specific. Okay. Um, also, uh, it looks like with the Water Department, um, there's a, lo a lot going on over the next six years in that. Are we essentially replacing all of the equipment? Um, uh, sur the surprisingly, no. There's there's oh, a lot really? more. Um, if you go back to that, the new table four, um, which is page. Page 148, um, we're going to put um, beyond the six years, there's almost another six million dollars in projects that we have identified. Oh, OK. OK, that's probably long overdue then. And the last question I have is the is on that future chart on page 154. Um, wastewater needs $10 million in 2032. What's that 10 million for? I, I would have to go back and look at the detail, but I'm pretty sure it's the, if you go to the wastewater plant, there's, you see those huge concrete towers. Um, mm -hmm. It would be rehabbing those treatment towers. Okay, that's a pricey project, sounds like. Yep. Okay, that's all I have, thank you. Does anyone else have questions? Bill? Um, I wanted to know what, what stamped concrete means. So essentially along when they uh, put the sidewalks down, they can use like a, like a stamping to put a pattern into the concrete. So it makes uh, it a little more, a little more decorative. Okay. And I also, um, I don't quite understand the sump pump. So there's uh, approximately 750 homes in the city um, that don't have anywhere to legally discharge their sump pumps right now. So we have a combination of people discharging into the street, which causes icy conditions, people illegally uh, discharging into the sanitary sewer, which is prohibited under state law. So this is basically giving them some place to, to take their storm water. Where, where does it give them to take it? It would, it would actually put storm sewer in front of their homes. Okay. All right, and this will will this help with them in some way with flooding and things? Or yes, yes, yep, absolutely. Because it's kind of, I mean, as as we pave more stuff in this city, then yep, water gets into people's basements and things. Yeah, the, I think um, our public works folks have actually identified the areas that have like the most need for this. Um, the ones yeah. you know that were hit the hardest in 2017. Some of that area doesn't have storm sewer. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Leash. Hi, Chris. I was looking at pages 59 through 61 of the Capital Improvement Plan where you mentioned the, um, um, the pathway connections to Mid-Michigan Pathway and really connecting the current park system and how popular those paths are with the path going, you know, basically up to Mission Creek Park. And I can't help but think given how popular those paths are in the pre-existing, you know, at least parks that are connected, um, Nelson Park, Island Park, Mill Pond, et cetera, that is a nice, you know, day out. There's And then we're crossing uh, Pickard uh, by Harris. There um, does this plan account for any sort of uh, whether it's signalized uh, intersection or pedestrian crossing signs or flashing lights at that point, or is that just um, strictly for the uh, the pavement? And what's um, you know in the text of the capital improvement plan? Now, um, when we had our capital improvement plan, our public folk, pub, uh, public works folks were definitely concerned about that, and they're looking at traffic studies. They're looking at the best way to address that because obviously, if it's it's popular and that's a high traffic area, we got to do whatever we can to make that safer. So it's we're definitely addressing that as as much as we can. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Okay, next item on the agenda is anticipated agenda items for the next meeting, Commissioner Kane. Uh, oh, st staff, <laughs> the uh, uh, Commissioner Honig, we need to get a recommendation from the Planning Commission on the plan before we move forward from that. Oh, sorry about that. No problem. Uh, <laughs> I recommend that the City Commission adopt the 2021 to 2026 capital replacement plan. Any discussion? Mr. King, will you uh, take a roll call vote? Yeah, I just want to confirm that uh, adoption of the capital improvement plan. Improvement plan. Yeah. From our motioners and seconders. Okay. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Friedrich. Aye. Commissioner Honig. Aye. Commissioner Horgan. Aye. Commissioner Irwin. Nay. Commissioner Kostreva. Aye. Commissioner Leash. Aye. Commissioner Ortman. Aye. Commissioner Rice. Commissioner Rice, could you unmute your microphone? Aye. Thank you. All right, Madam Chair, the uh, recommendation was passed eight to one with Commissioner Irwin voting against. Thank you. And next item on the agenda is anticipated agenda items for the next meeting. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at this point, we were anticipating two items for tonight's meeting, which were delayed as a result of COVID-19 uh, and people unable to do the required work to submit those projects um, under the state's, um, the executive order. Um, I am aware that one of those two projects is likely to be delayed again to our July meeting. Um, I have not heard back from the applicant for the other, so we may see that case come forward. If we do not, we will likely uh, cancel the meeting um, if there's no other business to attend to. I do, as part of my staff report, also want to remind everyone uh, about the census that's going on. Hopefully by now all of you have completed your census online at my2020census.gov. I'd encourage you, if you have not done that, to please do that. And to please encourage those uh, folks who you know at work and in your neighborhoods to do that as well. Um, throughout the nation, response rates are quite a bit down as a result of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. US Census Bureau's efforts have been delayed to do their typical outreach efforts. And um, like with our master plan outreach, a lot of the city's census outreach efforts involved person-to-person um, -person contact and were canceled as a result of COVID-19. And so it's all the more critical that we get the word out and let people know um, it's very simple to do. I completed my census in five minutes on my smartphone. Um, it's, it's a very quick process. So again, it's uh, my2020census.gov and hopefully everyone can, um, can fill that out um, during this uh, time at home. And with that, other than thanking you all for um, taking the time this past week test your software so that you could successfully join us this evening and for taking the time to join us this evening. Um, I have nothing further to add, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Kane. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Do we need a roll call vote for adjourning? We do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Commissioner Daly. Oh, absolutely not. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Friedrich. Aye. Commissioner Honig? Aye. Commissioner Horgan? Aye. Commissioner Irwin? Aye. Commissioner Kostreva? Aye. Commissioner Leash? Aye. Commissioner Ortman? Aye. Commissioner Rice? Aye. That motion passes unanimously, Madam Chair. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Be right. careful. Right. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.